Our first guest tonight is a truly legendary performer and one of the funniest men to work the earth. You can see him in his natural habitat live on stage in Las Vegas at the Orleans Hotel March 24th and 25th and on April 12th at the San Manuel Bingo and Casino in Highland, California with Joan Rivers. Please say hello to Mr. Warmth, the great Don Rickles. <laughs> Maybe they'll start again. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, I must say that's it's very kind. That's we as performers live live that uh, your applause and unfortunately. <laughs> but, uh, that's all. <laughs> Jimmy, well, how are you? God I'm bless doing you. Well. How are you? And how is Australia? This I man <laughs> called me from Australia. That's how lonely he is. <laughs> right. The only phone call I made from Australia. Honestly, he and Molly, his lovely lady. Call me from Australia, and I was talking uh -huh. to you like you were in L.A. around the corner. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And, you, and you got on the phone, you know, and you acted like you belonged there. <laughs> Did you ever go to Australia? No. They put a dummy in the front row. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You're very sweet. I'm kidding. We do that especially for you. <laughs> Shut I want to congratulate you. How, that's a good ad lib. Huh? Shut up. <laughs> After what I heard before. <laughs> okay. I want to congratulate you on entering, you really have, have entered the digital age in a very, very big way. And I will explain more. First of all, you're tweeting now. Yes, yes. I follow you on Twitter. I swear, Jimmy, I swear, my wife, Barbara, I married 47 years, and she says, why do you, why do you just sit on the couch? <laughs> I said, well, sweetheart, well, you got a tweeter, you know. So now, I sat down, I said, what do you do? Just write little funny things. And I'm sitting there writing little funny things, you know. Right. And guys are writing back like, <laughs> boom, and go tell you. <laughs> yeah, and right. Yeah. But no, people are very nice, and all of a sudden, I got, and I have no followers, you know. I write my own stuff. They say, no, no, you have people hired who writes for you. No, I write my own stuff. I all write about you. You yeah, know that. You did write something about <laughs> me. Because I, I know you need help. <laughs> anyway, uh, no, he doesn't. He does great. I, I, I swear. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> he's got to laugh like a dead duck or something. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny because it's the insult is there, and then you have to say, no, no, you don't need help, which indicates that I actually do need help. Now, what did you prove by that statement? I don't know. <laughs> Nobody I'm cares. Sorry I said it. The show went right in the toilet as soon as you make your speech. When you are <laughs> trying to keep it rolling, like like my boys there, the, the Cleo brothers. <laughs> <laughs> That's father and son. That's, that's, I know it's father yeah, and son. Father. I made it to clear up my son. And, and this Clark Gable's son over here, whatever else. <laughs> it's Dickie, yes, yes. And you're a nice gentleman. I never mentioned you. What is your name again? My name's Dickie. Dickie? Uh, <laughs> sorry, yeah. My mother used to say, Don't touch your Dickie! <laughs> No, Why they say that sort of thing? Shut up. <laughs> God bless. Good to see you, Dick. Thank you very much. Good luck. What about a kid? <laughs> Dick, he's Irish, and he's got tattoos all over his body. <laughs> no, don't knock it for tattoos. Don't knock the Irish. I didn't don't knock. That way. I the Jews are perfect. The Irish are so-so. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. No, I'll make you feel good, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not only are you tweeting, which seems like enough, but you now have an app. And I have your app. I actually own your app, and I have it on my iPad here. You gotta explain a lot of that stuff to me, Jim. I'm, I'm you good. don't know how this works? Well, I, you know, I, I just take the finger like you do and punch and see what happens. Okay, here's first of all, we got your app here, and it's loading. And your theme song plays. And it says, Hey, dummy, tap my head or shake me for a classic Zynga. All right, well, let's just tap your head and see what happens. Smartphones, uh, who cares, smartphone? I only have dummy phones. Kiss my hockey puck dummy phones. 
All right. And well, what we can do here is go through categories and we can pick different things um, like, let's see, you've got ethnic is a good category. Oh, that's a good one. Sure, I don't have the armband. Sure. Let's see what, what you have to say right about. Right away, he's got to knock the Jews. Right away, <laughs> ethnic. Let's see what you have to say about my people, the Italian. Oh, I love the Italian people. They eat spaghetti, they swell up and they die fast and the whole family has a festival. <laughs> What else did I do? All right, I'm going to go to miscellaneous. This is another category. Um, let's see. Okay, there's one about sex toys. Okay. Ooh. Sex toys I don't need. The wife has all of those, and I just jump over them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you get a chance, folks, buy it. My wife is short of jewelry. <laughs> let's see. Oh, you got celebrities on here, too. All right. I hope I made it. Bob Newhart's so great, so wonderful, so clever. But I got to be honest. Really gets on my nerves. Okay, hold on. Let me. Let me. Get, I want to get to myself here. You're very I... Bob Newhart, my dearest friend. He's gonna scream at me for crap. Okay, this is me. Jimmy Kimmel's a great host. There's one big problem. He laughs at hello. <laughs> that I is do. true. I do laugh at almost I everything know what you, you say. Do, yeah, yeah. I know what you do. <laughs> well, this is. <laughs> I gotta stop doing it. Yeah. This is a very cool thing, and you have a website Wait as a minute, well. Wait a minute, that's is that do you have to pay for that? Yeah, two, it's two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. That's not bad, guys. That's not bad. It's less than three dollars. <laughs> you also have a website, which, if you don't mind, we'll go through. Oh, it's got your concert dates on there, and um, there's a uh, yeah. gallery here with yeah. photographs of all sorts. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that was good times. <laughs> Let's see. Let's go through some of these, and will you? Because there's some great, great pictures in here. And will you tell us about some of these things sure. that uh, we're seeing there? Okay. Oh, here's a good one. That's you and uh, Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood is the most humble guy in the world. We did a picture called Kelly's Heroes. I don't know if any people saw that. <laughs> That, that, that's about 45 years ago in Yugoslavia. I was supposed to go there, my wife and I, for like uh, maybe two weeks. We stayed six months. And we watched uh, Clinton, and he walked around. He was a lot of fun. You'd say, Clint, isn't this fun? <laughs> anyway, uh, but he's a sweet guy. His, and I said, I want the same account. You get a chance to look over here. Yeah, dude. yeah, OK. I'm trying to <laughs> run the thing. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. <laughs> OK. But, so we're getting the same accommodations I want as Clint Eastwood. Did I know to him a pickup truck and a dog was paradise? <laughs> <laughs> but he's a great star. Really, you ask him. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great one. You, what are you doing here? First time in my life, I was very young then. And they said he can't do it, and I water skied on Lake Mead. First mm -hmm. time with a guy called Stan Irwin taught me how to do it. We got another picture of you really water skiing there. You're doing it pretty well. That's pretty good, Jim. Huh? That I never would have imagined, I have to say. Now we got a bunch of, uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, we got a, uh, there's one of you and Tommy Lasorda of the Dodgers. Yeah, Tommy's a great guy, great. Tommy Lasorda had me, uh, I don't know if you're in, in uniform that day, I used to go down and talk to the team. They always, and all these kids from the, the Dominion Republic used to sit down and go, May the Rego, you talk to Tommy, get me in the game. Talk to Tommy, talk to Tommy. I said, get a visa, get a visa. Oh, here's, this is a good one. There's you and Barbara with... Uh, Liberace. Liberace. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing a movie about his life, by the way. Lee was a great guy. He really was. He was a charming man, and he, he adored Barbara, and I, I used to kid him, you know. In those days, we didn't do about skipping around a lot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Today, yeah. it's normal. Liza Minnelli, Liza Minnelli. Yeah, Liza, darling lady, big star, great. This is... Uh, That's uh, me you and Bob Newhart, you my You and the great friend. Bob Newhart, That's yes. That's right, I'm Santa Claus, and Jewish... I, I did that as a favor. <laughs> uh. We got... Uh, oh, you Carol O'Connor. Carol O'Connor. Great man, great man. We had, I did his show, and we became great friends. He used to like to sit down, let's have a booze, pow. He was a big drinker, Carol O'Connor. Well, he's Irish. Where, where, where else was he going? <laughs> you and your pal Regis there. Yeah. How is Regis? As you and I know, Regis, ladies and gentlemen, even though he's not on the show, he's the most charming, kindest human being you'll ever meet. And he, he's going on a trip for three weeks on a cruise. He's on the cruise right now. He, he said, Don, I don't want to go three weeks, three weeks on a cruise. And if you know Regis, he talks to anybody. You know, the guy pulling the rope. Hey, how, how you doing, Charlie? The guy on the uh, mop on the floor. Hey, Lou, good to see you. And he gets out of the cabin and goes, oh, Regis is here. Regis is here. <laughs> he drops his shy. pants and fires a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> And I was honored to see that you have a photograph of the two of us here yeah, yeah, in yeah. front of uh, like a monster truck or something. But can we, 
May I, and I gotta tell you, yeah. which you folks might not know. I know Jimmy a long time, and I always used to kid him. I, I didn't know him when he was in sports. He was great with sports as, as a critic and an announcer athlete. and so forth. And, and a pummy? And a great athlete. Don't push it. <laughs> you were doing great till the I'm sorry to interrupt. All of a sudden, a great athlete. <laughs> yeah, keep, Go in the bathroom, to keep get undressed, and look at your body, and you'll know what a great athlete. <laughs> great athlete. <laughs> The lower part does a ripple around the mountain. <laughs> anyway, but Jimmy was always a, a good, charming, wonderful guy, and still is. And everybody, not everybody, but a good deal of the crew and the people you see around him are family and dear friends. He hired people, like the Cletos. He knew his son way back. Yeah. He hires people that, that cared about him, and he cared about them. And that's very unusual that I, I, I he should be oh, thank you. Well, thank you. That's not, I thought it was gonna end with something neat. Yeah. But if we zoom in here, can we zoom in at all on this? Because you can see it's me and Don. It says Don Rickles and Jimmy Fallon are seen backstage. <laughs> <laughs> A little proofreading next yeah. time around. Watch Jimmy Fallon and if you want to learn how to play ping pong. <laughs> Don Rickles, everybody. You see Don at the Orleans in Vegas, March 24th and 25th, and San Manuel Bingo and Casino with Joan Rivers on April 12th. Our first guest tonight is a truly legendary performer and one of the funniest men to work the earth. You can see him in his natural habitat live on stage in Las Vegas at the Orleans Hotel March 24th and 25th and on April 12th at the San Manuel Bingo and Casino in Highland, California with Joan Rivers. Please say hello to Mr. Warmth, the great Don Rickles. <laughs> That's how lonely he is. <laughs> the only phone call I made from Australia. Oh, that, he and Molly, his lovely lady, called me from Australia, and I was talking uh -huh. to you like you were in L.A. around the corner. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And, you, and you got on the phone, you know, and you acted like you belonged there. <laughs> Did you ever go to Australia? No. They put a dummy in the front row. For <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You're very sweet. How are you? Wait a minute, maybe they'll start again. <laughs> I must say that's it's very kind. That's we as performers live live that uh, your applause and unfortunately <laughs> but, uh, that's all. <laughs> Jimmy, well, how are you? God I'm bless doing you. Well. How are you? And how is Australia? This I man <laughs> called me from Australia. Our first guest has been recognized by all as one of the funniest men on planet Earth. And now, at long last, he's nominated for his first ever Emmy Award for the great documentary, Mr. Warmth, The Don Rickles Project. You can see him live at Town Hall in New York City, October 22nd through the 24th. Please hide your ethnicity and welcome Don Rickles. <laughs> like a movie, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to see you, and congratulations on the Emmy nomination. Very excited. Long overdue. Spe thank you so much, and thank you, because Jimmy did a great job. We had a town hall thing uh, where we had all the people talk uh, at the Emmy at the TV Academy, yeah. and you were so great to come. 
And the, uh, I, I'm sorry about the money, <laughs> but uh, we're working it out. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's fine. But Whatever. Great. You're yeah. a sweetheart oh, of a guy. Believe me, it was my pleasure. That's we good. did an event together. That's, and that's good. We're the okay. <laughs> oh, there's more? Oh, oh okay. <laughs> You were You're a good announcer. Here we are. Jimmy Kimmel! <laughs> you get a brain hemorrhage. Jimmy Kimmel! <laughs> hey, Jimmy Kimmel! <laughs> That's a little false. Three gay guys in the valley went, he's on? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it is great to Hi, see sweetie. you. You didn't think you'd see me up close, huh? <laughs> kind of exciting. You should see me in my underwear. The, the legs go up. <laughs> I've not seen that. I would like to come by the house Shut and see up, you. Shut up, Jimmy. Don't get out of here. <laughs> Don, you are nominated in, in this category, and it's a tough category. You're nominated against uh, Wait John a minute. Stewart. It's not one Emmy. It's two. Well, yeah, well. One I'm, for the show. Uh -huh. and, and you know what, Jimmy? That's the truth. And, and you, you, you guys, ladies and gentlemen, and you young people. I'm 82 years young, and my wife and I said, you know, in, in my entire career, Cleto, I, they always said, you know, Don, a funny guy, funny guy. But nobody ever knew I was alive, really, you know. <laughs> and they all said, hey, yeah, 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 he's funny, but he insults everybody, leave him alone, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> now that I got an Emmy, I got people going, hi, Don, how about a cocktail together? Oh, really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, but, and, 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 if, and if by some miracle, which, you know, that's uh, just being nominated is an honor. But if I do win an Emmy, I say to you people, and to Jimmy, and to Cleto, and his son, and the entire group here, you people will never see me again. <laughs> <laughs> and we have mixed feelings then about it. <laughs> You're nominated against Tina Fey. Weak, weak. <laughs> Stephen Colbert. Also weak. Also weak. <laughs> John Stewart. Maybe. <laughs> David Letterman. A threat. <laughs> a threat. No, that's funny. You know Dave, and I know Dave, and, and uh, he's a wonderful guy. And it would be so hilarious if I went into me and walked up and said, I don't want to be on your show anymore. I'm too big. I'm going to be with Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and then Regis Philbin he, would go, ah, he got an Emmy. <laughs> and David Regis Tate, is a good friend of mine. Jimmy? Yours. Yeah, Regis is a good friend. Yeah, he's yeah. not here. We had a birthday party the other night, and we celebrated. And my you wife, did? Yeah, we didn't give a gift. <laughs> uh, no, he's really rich. I, cause I knew him when he was schlepping around looking for work down right. here on Hollywood Boulevard, you know, when Joey Bishop, rest his soul, was alive. And I said, Joey Bishop went, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> He was the announcer like Ed McMahon, God bless him. Regis was, yeah. I know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm 82. I'm not a moron. <laughs> See, I like this front row. You're a Mexican, right, my friend? <laughs> but you know, you're American Indian, an Indian. Yeah. Am, am I right? Yeah. What's your tribe? <laughs> no, seriously, what's your tribe? Yeah, Aztec. What, Aztec? Yeah. Trouble. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> no, that, that, that's the guy. See, I work all Indian casinos. And oh. you people have been very kind to me. You're not thinking, oh, he's going to make a speech? <laughs> anyway, uh, I said hello to Geronimo, and this guy wanted to know 20 minutes. <laughs> no, so we work in the casinos, and your people have done wonderful things with the reservations and casinos and helped a guy like me to have plenty of work, and we thank you, really. <laughs> Really? Okay, shut up. Let me just tell you. Which means stop circling my house. I'm getting fed up. <laughs> Cleto, don't you find this funny? <laughs> That's Cleto's son is sitting there going, well, when, 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 do, when do we play again? <laughs> Don, you, um, you have been all over the world, but you have been to China where the Olympics actually were. I was. Did you uh, watch the Olympics? <laughs> yeah, I saw one when the guy did a high dive and hit the cement. Uh-huh. Anyway, uh, no, the Olympics is great. These young people are so fantastic. Uh, and, the, and, hey, the NBA was not great, and you were a former sports guy. And, yeah. You yeah. know, uh, to see our, our USA and Kobe Bryant and the rest of those great young people playing and win, that was great. It and was, destroy everyone, really, yeah, in yeah, their path. It was great. Did you enjoy watching that, even though they won by, you know, they won so Well, I have a lot on my mind. This is not my whole life. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I don't lay in bed going, uh, Channel 4, put it on. I want to see the, the, the sword deal. Uh, you know. <laughs> Yeah, don't you love that when they do all the go? Oh, you know, come on, come on. 
And it just hits him with a, with a silver suit, and the guy goes, oh, da, 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 da. <laughs> I don't get it, you know, but... You and your and friend... the audience didn't either, so it's all right. <laughs> you and your friend, um, Bob Newhart, part of the documentary... Who? Bob Newhart. Yeah, he's in the business. You yeah. guys, you took a trip to China that is in the documentary. Yeah, we went to Beijing, and, and you were in the documentary, too. But I wasn't in China, though. Well, hey, you. you want everything for China? <laughs> no, you know, it's the old joke. You go to China, you say, oh, I want chicken chow mein. That's my favorite. I'm a New Yorker, so it was always chicken chow mein. And they don't make those kind of dishes. But it's, the food is fantastic. It really is. Is it? And the people were very gracious. It really is. And then we went to one of these uh, villages way out of town. And poor Bob Newhart, he, he's a Mid-Easterner, you know. He knows one thing. You go to Paris, he goes, do you have spaghetti bolognese? You know, <laughs> that's all he knows. Anyway, so <laughs> I'm laughing now because he's going to call me later. going, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're trying to make me a jerk? Is that what you're trying to do? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a minute. I love to hear myself. <laughs> well, no, he's a great guy. Bob's a dear friend, and his wife, Jen, I, well, Bob, my Barbara and I, we adore them and love them. They, you guys they, do a lot of traveling oh, together? Oh, yeah, we used to before 9-11, and now with grandchildren and a lot of responsibilities. But if you, if you ever meet people in this business and you can adore, it's the Newhart family. They are. A great, and we spend Christmas together. <laughs> I don't think they're probably going to meet him, though, unfortunately. Bob, what? <laughs> they're probably not going to get that chance to spend Christmas with Bob. What is wrong with you? <laughs> I don't know. Everybody was nice. They applauded. I know, I know. I know. And you had to run in with a dumb remark. Why? Know. You know what? It's probably best You're a big take... star. You make $40 million. Why do you turn? These people loved it. They're like, yeah. And then you go, blah, blah, blah. You're, you're right, you're right. Let's take a commercial break. We're right back with Don yeah. Rickles. So I'm live at Town Hall in New York, October 25th. We're right back. One time on The Tonight Show, he, uh, he went out to the audience, and uh, <laughs> there were two kids. He asked two kids. He said, you know, what's your name? The kid gave him his name. He slapped the kid in the face. Don't lie to me. <laughs> what is he doing? He's out of control. <laughs> you don't do that to the audience. You're slapping the audience. <laughs> it's, not an, it's not an actor. It's not somebody in show business. The poor kid is just, he told you his name. Yeah, that's from Mr. Warren, the Don Rickles Project, nominated for two Emmy Awards. And uh, we're here with Don Rickles. And Don By the way, that was Marty Scorsese. You, you folks, it was on a sign, so in case you didn't know. But uh, he is one of the finest directors, he really is. And he's Italian like you, you know. Yeah, just, so every scene we did, he went, <laughs> He's a wonderful artist. Do he you really get is. excited when a guy like Martin Scorsese says he's a fan of yours and he not, wants... Is that no, impressive? not really. When I'm with you, I get excited. <laughs> <laughs> this is exciting because you have not performed in New York City in how long? Oh, God. Well, it wasn't that long. I, I performed maybe... Uh, Five, six years ago in Carnegie Hall. Oh, you, five, six years yeah, ago? Yeah, okay. And then, then after my, my big treat was before he passed away, the great man. He was my hero, really. We all have heroes in life, and he was my Frank Sinatra. Uh, <laughs> you, will, you will never... See, I think in this business, when we... Uh, you as musicians know, when you never can duplicate a guy, this guy was... I hate to call the guy. Mr. Sinatra was fantastic. And I was uh, on the show with him at Radio City Music Hall, Jimmy. And I grew up in New York. I grew mm -hmm. up in a place called Jackson Heights. Mm -hmm. And uh, now it's Haiti. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. And anyway, so I got... <laughs> I didn't know you were a Haitian. No, I had no I, idea. I, 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 I. <laughs> so, Jimmy, so I work at Radio City Music Hall, and to walk out on the stage, you know, and, and uh, on the marquee it said, Don Rickles, Frank Sinatra, and the Count Basie Orchestra. Frank never got over that, you know what I'm saying? Because he knew I was bigger than him. <laughs> anyway, I can say that now because he's gone, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but he was a special man, you know, and to be with him was to... You know, he walked into a room, he had a great charisma. Reagan had that. Certain people have that excitement. You have it. I have that, yeah. yeah for here. <laughs> for three guys in an alley, you have it for you. Know? 
<laughs> no, you do. You have a great and you have a great warm feeling, which and I, I mean that sincerely. And you make and your mom and dad, you you make people feel at home. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And let me tell you something. If, if you haven't, or even if you have, go see Don Rickles at Town Hall in New York City, October 22nd through the 24th, because uh, it, you know, it's something everyone should see. Don Rickles, everybody. Look for him at the Emmys. We'll be right back with Maurice Green. First ever Emmy Award for the great documentary, Mr. Warmth, the Don Rickles Project. You can see him live at Town Hall in New York City, October 22nd through the 24th. Please hide your ethnicity and welcome Don Rickles. <laughs> Oh my God, movie, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to see you, and congratulations on the Emmy nomination. Very exciting. Long overdue. For more than 50 years, our first guest has been recognized by all as one of the funniest men on planet Earth. And now, at long last, he's nominated for his... Wonderful to see you, Don. Wait a minute. They're still cheering. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut it off. Well, I'll let you finish. <laughs> Don, this is... Um... <laughs> yeah, everything all right? Uh, it's great, great. You know how many times I you've like been here? I like Hitler had one of those. He's <laughs> <laughs> got a new thing, eh? All of a sudden, you're going to get an umbrella, and I find you skipping in the park. <laughs> this is the, the eighth appearance you've made on this show. I'll drop my pants and fire a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> this is the eighth time. That's exciting, really. It is. Well, yeah. for me, it is. Wife yeah. and I can move out of the motel and get to a big house. <laughs> look at all these people. God bless them. Look, look at the way they dress. Torn jeans. Jeez. Yeah. This guy all mustache and a trick-or-treat shirt. What the hell? Where do these people come from? They must be out in an alley saying, can we see the show, Al? <laughs> Nobody. I'm not with them. I'm dressed like it's at a party for crying. I know. Time. You and I came dressed very well. and, and Don't nobody... put me with you. Please. <laughs> I know who I am. I remember when you were doing football and baseball, and all of a sudden they gave you this little thing and you skyrocket. Yeah, well. <laughs> By the way, um, yeah, as you know, not yeah. only am I excited, but my Uncle Frank is especially excited that I you're here Uncle tonight. I love Uncle Frank, and, and, and God bless you. Hey, Frank. Yeah. God bless me. And you're a grandfather. Yeah, first time. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you I know him when he was a cop in New York, and he used to stand on the street and go, Psst, you got a minute? <laughs> I don't know what that means. It's his, but you're <laughs> it's his Jimmy, first grandchild. Jimmy, yeah. I know him since he's a kid. Yeah. At the Elegante in Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah. Shut up, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> he does. The Elegante. That was, a, that was a nightclub I, I started in Brooklyn, New York. Right. right. All Italians and Jews, and the Italians just sit in the front and go, when is he going to get funny? <laughs> all class, all classy guys. Well, you've with come the guns in the pocket. A long I'm way. Not finished. I'm sorry. I don't know why to talk. What's the matter with you? I'm a guest. You just sit there like you do. And <laughs> wait for me to be finished. Well, I do want to say congratulations. Toy Story won uh, the Golden Isn't that Globe something? Award, and you were a potato in that. That's got to be exciting. 16 years, Mr. Potato Head. John Lasseter came to me down to my house and said, listen, Don, you're going to be this show, Mr. Potato Head. I said, I don't do cartoons. Leave me alone. <laughs> and now it's 16 years later. I got a big house with hunting dogs and whole 
then <laughs> thought it was worth it. You know what I mean? I would think so. But he always says, you know, it's, it, you should see it. It's for grown-ups, too. It really is. But when I first started, Lesnar was always the kind of guy, I just wanted to check, you know. He said, listen, Don, you're going to be... Uh, Bucket, the band can't see me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now you look like you're in the toilet. I don't know what to do. I'll move like back. Anybody got a magazine? <laughs> <laughs> look at it. The son don't want to laugh to the old man, okay, sir? Look at it. God bless you. I spoke to Border Patrol. You're going back. <laughs> There's no voting. You got in here free. There's no voting. <laughs> anyway, so uh, what was I saying? John Lasseter, the guy who runs yeah, so, Pixar. So, you know, to do the thing, you know, you just say, well, you sit in a booth and there's nobody there and you're with a microphone. He says, now, Don, you got to understand, when the duck gets sick, you're, you're Mr. Potato Head, you got to feel sorry for the monkey, and then the, and then the elephant is tired, and the bird is I said, it's 6.30, I want to go home. <laughs> I don't give a crap about the elephant or the monkey. You know. 16 years later, get a nice check, you know, and now I worry about the animals. Did you go, <laughs> did you go to the Golden Globes or the parties too or anything? I'm stuff? too big for that. You're too big for that? <laughs> I went, uh, Brad Gray, dear friend, gave a party, and, and Disney and uh, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, Toy Story people gave mm -hmm. a, a party. We went to that and oh, you uh, did. had a couple of vodkas and, and met a few people. Met Jeff Bridges for the first time. Lovely oh, yeah? guy. Yeah, nice guy. Came over to me and said, I'm Brooke Jeff Bridges. And I said, get away. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> No, I didn't say that. He's a lovely guy. And all the actors. Did you know, you know his dad, Jeff Bridges? Oh, I did. Yeah. Well, I knew him when he had the bathing suit and was diving for fish. <laughs> anyway, uh, you people don't remember that. Anyway. It's an old show, yeah. but yeah. yeah. Hey, your friend. <laughs> you murder when you work with a dummy. <laughs> Your very dear friend Regis made a big announcement on the air uh, the, the yesterday morning or the morning before last, yeah. saying he's not going to be on the show anymore. Yeah, I'm sick about it. <laughs> anyway, uh, you and Regis are very close. We are. We're dear friends, and it was time to walk away. I mean, you know. <laughs> I mean, the man was on the show and started a wheeze while he was talking. You know. <laughs> hey, hey. You know, and Notre Dame and the Irish and the priests and the whole thing. It was, uh, I'm fed up with it. <laughs> and the little girl next to him is going, he's going to go. He's going to go. <laughs> anyway, so it should be exciting. Yeah. No, uh, Reese had a great run, and I, I love him dearly. He knows that. His wife, Joy, is not here tonight. She's a stripper, you know. <laughs> I did not know that. She works, in, she works in Cleveland, quietly. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> did he call you and then tell you what, what was yeah, going on? he calls on? me. He calls me on the phone, you know. And he's always, I say, you know, Reed, the show last night wasn't the, the, the morning. I never... I, once in a while I get up that early when I'm not taking a shot at the wife. Yeah. Anyway, uh... <laughs> Hey, when you're married as I am, I'm married 45 years, God bless her. And, and I guess you never saw her. <laughs> anyway, uh, see, that joke will cost me. <laughs> no, when you're married 45 years, it's not like you young people. You know, right away you get in bed going, come on, Charlie, let's go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you're married 45 years, you say, you got a glass of water? <laughs> Let's get in the tub first and get cooled off. <laughs> See, Jews don't do that. We circle a bed and get an estimate. <laughs> anyway, uh... Regis. Regis, yes. Re now, are you worried now that Regis is going to be out of a job that he will want well, you I to can. pay? Well, I care what he does, Regis. Well, you go to dinner, he's going to want you to he pick up his he, check. No, let's not get crazy. Uh, <laughs> no, he's a very wonderful man. And you know what? When you think about his career, God bless him, so many years. And to be as warm, to know the gentleman really is a treat. I, I, to be on the serious side for a moment, really to know him has been a great treat for me. And you know him too. Yeah, he's a great guy. He has guy. a great style and a great deal of class. And I'm going to miss him on the air, but I'll see him socially, and we hang out. Because well, when we go out socially, he's great, you know. He goes, did they, did they recognize me? <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's annoying, you know what I mean? I'm surprised, I have to say, that you were not invited to the White House state dinner for the Chinese president. I think you would have been a wonderful addition to that meal. Uh, absolutely. Jews love chicken chow mein. <laughs> absolutely. How many times have you been there? How many times have Wait you... Wait a minute, I, I like that rebar. <laughs> no, how many times have I been to the White House? The White House, yeah. I think about, about eight. Eight times? Yeah. 
What, what do we like? Win a prize? What I, don't, well, it's, <laughs> I, I, I had a great relationship. Ronald Reagan and Mr. Saul. He was, well, I knew him when he was governor, and then he was an actor and we, on the roast, the Dean Martin Mr. Saul, the Dean Martin roast. Had a great time with Ronald Reagan. He was great. And then George Bush, uh, God bless him, you know, I was at the inaugural and did a show. And Frank Sinatra said, he said, we're going to have Rickles. It was the uh, Ronald Reagan inaugural. He said, we're going to have uh, Don Rickles. Frank said, we're going to have Don Rickles on the show for the Washington for the ro- inaugural for Ronald Reagan. And the, and the cabinet said, nah, what are you, crazy? We're not going to have him. What? And Frank said, you don't have him, you don't have me, you know. And he said, look how quiet it got. And he said that, of course he had a gun on him. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> I can say that because his guys are all dead. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> give me a minute, because everything I say, I'm going to do up in my room later and laugh my ass off. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, so he, he he insisted that you be a part yeah, of the yeah. inauguration. Yeah, and I got on a show, and I, and I got out there, and I never know what I'm going to say. And it was a great night, you know, with kidding the cabinet and everybody, and they were all wonderful to me. And and then uh, Ronald Reagan was great, and he became president, and I didn't hear from him. But no, <laughs> no, no, he was always always so nice. And uh, and and the guy I, I met Clinton just for a few minutes, a charming gentleman. But I, I only met him at uh, Clint, Clint Eastwood was uh, on it. You know, mm-hmm. do you know Clint Eastwood? I met him. Yeah, he's a lot of fun, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> <laughs> he and Robert De Niro, how would you like to be with the two of them on New Year's Eve? <laughs> Mother, come on, this is funny stuff, Ma. <laughs> Ma Barker's sitting there going... <laughs> come on, Ma, I'm funny. Gee. In, um, in My March, mother loved me. Anyway. In March, you're going to do two nights at the Orleans in Vegas. How many years have you been doing Vegas now? About 52. 52 years in Las <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> I saw you at the Orleans, and really, it's a fantastic show. And if you've never seen Don live, or if you have seen Don live, it's it's I I oh, recommend I couldn't you. recommend it more highly. This is um and really like for you, it's amazing at your age. And I hope you take no offense, but the- no, I'm not offended. <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm serious. I'm, I'm 84. But God. it is incredible to watch you on the stage. It's like you got hit by a bolt of lightning or something before you go on stage. Well, it's true. It's, it's all of us, even at your age, and you're still a young man. But when we get out there and the light goes on, it's either a prison break or do a show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm coming from Brooklyn. You know, every time I see a light, I go, run, Charlie, run. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's great because... It, you got the energy and young people that some of you are here tonight that, that come still come to see me and I'm very flattered because I, 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 I just exaggerate all of us and that's what I do. They say the insult guy. Listen, after 50 years, uh, I hurt nobody. I'm never mean-spirited and I have a good time and I enjoy myself. And I say this from my heart. I am the greatest living comedian. <laughs> in January 28th at Ruth Eckert Hall in Clearwater, Florida, and you're going to be playing with Joan Rivers there, too, yeah, she's right? She's a wonderful artist. Yeah, I'm going to be with her, and she doesn't know it, but... <laughs> <laughs> John Rickles, we'll be right back with the Blue God bless him. Look, look at the way they dress. Torn jeans. Jeez. Yeah. This guy all mustache and a trick-or-treat shirt. Incredible. What the hell, where do these people come from? They must be out in an alley saying, can we see the show, Al? <laughs> Nobody, I'm not with them. I'm dressed like it's at a party for crying. I know. Time. Eighth appearance you've made on this show. I'll drop my pants and fire a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> this is the eighth time. That's exciting, really. It is. Well, yeah. for me, it is. Wife yeah. and I can move out of the motel and get to a big house. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all these people. It's wonderful to see you, Don. Wait a minute. They're still cheering. I'm <laughs> sorry. I didn't mean to come in. Well, I'll let you finish. <laughs> Don, this is, um... <laughs> Yeah, everything all right? Oh, it's great, great. You know how many times I you've like been here? I like Hitler had one of those. <laughs> <laughs> you got a new thing. Eh? All of a sudden, you're going to get an umbrella, and I'll find you skipping in the park. <laughs> 
This is the... the Great to see you. Lunch. <laughs> I must say, before we go any further, Uncle Frank, rest his soul, he's watching, but you are magnificent. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I just feel after that whole ceremony for Uncle Frank, it, it makes me feel good that I could come out and be Red Skelton. <laughs> uh, you know, it's not easy, you know, after you do a whole thing, you know. I know, I know. I, want so. to, I didn't want to come out. I wanted to go to the cemetery and say hello to my father. <laughs> well, my I father's laying there now going, why didn't he come over and see me, for crying out loud? <laughs> we'll do your my, dad tomorrow my night. my father died, you could cheer up. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's the matter with you? <laughs> There's a girl getting a spastic attack. <laughs> Well, it's great to have you here, Again, and uh, we really appreciate you coming on, on, on late notice to honor it's Uncle the, Frank. Hey, well, well, the man was great. He really was. In fact, every time I did the show, every time, he always, he always, always touched me after a salami sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> but every time you say, because we go back to Vegas, yeah. go way back, in New York when he was a cop, and I was working on Copacabana, and he was out, he always came into the kitchen, because I used to come out from the audience, and he'd come in the kitchen and say, hey, Don, is this, and you, you know how your uncle is. The, the guy laughed at, the, he laughed at anything, you know, if you were done. <laughs> I'd say, you know, Uncle Frank, uh, my cousin, that's shaking with him. <laughs> <laughs> that but is it, true, yeah. yeah. He laughed yeah. at everything, you know. That's we have right. a clip of the fir first time you were on the show, I think in 2006. Really? And um, your first interaction with Uncle Frank, I think, on the show. Yeah. Really? By the way, I got to tell you, Frank's yes. your uncle. God yes. bless you, Frank. Frank saw my show in Vegas. This is the truth, ladies. And he came backstage and he said, you know, Don, you were great. I'm going to call. Why don't you call up and maybe you'll get the job. Call up the show. <laughs> Frank, I did what you said and now I got the job. I can't thank you enough, Frank. He really Frank, said you're that. a moron. You're right. Well, you're right. <laughs> Those days, I mentioned earlier, my Uncle Frank worked at Caesar's Palace for uh, 20 years with uh, Cleto Sr., who's one in our band yeah, here. Yeah, nice to see you. Jesse and Frank. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> Jesse and Frank, they were the James gang before your time. <laughs> <laughs> and Who invited these people? I know. <laughs> They're still so sad. There. I didn't die. Uncle Frank went. I didn't die. <laughs> the host made a blithering idiot out of himself earlier. No, so you, it, you know what he yeah. used to do? Uh, 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 Uncle Frank was the security guard, and by the stage door, in those days, he's, you went right out into the casino mm -hmm. when you came off with the show. This isn't too fast for you, is it? No, no, oh, no. Okay, <laughs> you're, looking at, you're looking at me like I'm a chemistry set. <laughs> and he used to stand by the door, you know, uh -huh. every night, every night. And I'd come out and he'd go, stand back, everybody, stand back, Mr. Rickles is coming, bro. Stand back, stand back. And there was nobody there. <laughs> stand back, Mr. Rickles is coming, through. Did you ever, when he was Sinatra's security guard, did you know him then? Did you oh, have sure, interaction sure, back then? Sure, he, he used to come around and he'd say, uh, yeah, you with Frank tonight, huh? <laughs> Everything struck him funny. You know? Yeah, well, yeah, sure. I said, Frank, don't feel good. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was, that's the way it was. Your mom was a real character. Oh, yeah, my mother was a Jew Patton. <laughs> uh, General Patton, you folks, he was a great general in World War II. This crowd is dumb. <laughs> I mean, every time I come up with a name, the one that, that, that whole second row goes, hmm. Patton, huh? <laughs> anyway, General Patton, he was, a, he was, my mother's the kind of woman, uh, like Frank, everybody, like your Uncle Frank, if I could say that, a daughter. I mean, mm -hmm. when, when, we were, when I first came out to California, we lived in, 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 uh, the, the Sunset Towers at the time, just the two of us in a room, and we had a, we had a, a towel, came, like a big sheet, came down between us. Really? I, yeah, this is the truth. And when I had a date, I had to go and say, Mom, please, I'll give you a hundred, go out. You know? Really? <laughs> oh, yeah, it was one of those, what do you keep saying really? Well, I'm a liar. I don't know, I don't know if you're kidding or telling me the truth. I'm sure I... I'm kidding. No, I don't want to get depressed with you longer. <laughs> I'm sorry. Jeez, you know, give me a break. <laughs> Uncle Frank, he's just trying to depress me. <laughs> Hey Don, I know that your uh, your lovely wife Barbara celebrated her birthday. Yeah, on ninety four. Friday. Looks great. Anyway, <laughs> no, no, God bless. <laughs> what did yeah. you do? What is at this point? Do you go out? Do you go and find something for her and buy her something? How does it work? Well, usually, I, you know, I take her over to the hotel and do a couple of moves. Uh huh. <laughs> at my age, you just open the robe and go, "Come on, Spider, come on." <laughs> 
<laughs> and he just sits there going, hmm. It's a snap out of it. Take a nap later. Come on. No, we, we have a good time together. We, we, we've, been, we've been friends as well as lovers for 46 years, so I've been, I've been very, very blessed. Right. Yeah, yeah. And it's and it's like uh, uh, Chippy, right? Was she, Aunt Chippy, yeah. Is yeah. she d divorced, Frank? Yes, that's right. Smart move. <laughs> okay, listen. No, that's a joke. God bless you so much. And Chippy's in the back going, "It's not a joke." Oh, no, she's right on? there. Yeah. Hi, Chippy. How are you? She, um, it was. I heard a lot about her. I've never met her. I met her tonight. I met your wonderful sister in Vegas. And, and she came up to it with the husband and said, yeah, well, no, I'm kidding. She, yeah. she, she, my she, mother, my mother. Yeah. Well, what do you want me to do, throw a party? <laughs> <laughs> your mother was adorable, and, you, and your dad, too. They were great. They came backstage, boom, whacked it down a few. Uh, <laughs> no, they didn't. They, didn't. They, were, they, were, they, were like, they were Italian, but they acted like Mormons. You know what I'm saying? My, mo my mother's Italian, and my dad's German-Irish. I'm not from immigration. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just, you thought I'd be clear. You your, father, your father's German? German-Irish, yeah. Oh, I'm getting the hell out of here. <laughs> There's nothing to worry about. No, I'm a Jew, and a, hey, it, it's all over, and we're now friends, right? <laughs> he was here then. He wasn't over there. But You, you don't have that. to cop out. I know your father. I know, I know. I know. So, um, Does he still wear his helmet? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to ask my mother. Okay. Um, <laughs> the, um, Hey, I got a high five from Don Rickles. You don't get that every day. Do you remember when we took Uncle Frank to dinner with us? Oh, yeah, Jesus. We had such I a couldn't tell him that he was coming because I knew he'd drive me insane yeah, for yeah. weeks leading up to the dinner. But the night you were here and yeah. uh, Bob Newhart was joining us for yeah, dinner. Yeah, right. And I said, Uncle Frank, you want to come to dinner with us? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was right after you, your book had, uh, yeah, came yeah, out, your first right, book. Right. And Uncle Frank, unbeknownst to me, had written notes. Um, with every story in the book on them. Yeah. So at dinner, we sat there and Uncle Frank said, Don, do you remember when you uh, entertained President Reagan at the White House? And you said- It's in my book. Yeah, Frank, it's in the book. <laughs> and then he would turn to your wife, Barbara, and go, Barbara, did you know Don entertained President Reagan? <laughs> And Newhart was laughing, yeah. was crying. Yeah. He was laughing so hard. Yeah. It, was, it happened like 14 uh, times in a row. Yeah, Newhart's that, Newhart's that kind of guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, Bob, Bob that, that was a fun night. It, it was, was great. fun. And, and see, Uncle Frank, actually, when, when you came to that stage door, he always acted like, you know, like you were the biggest guest in, in show business. And I'm sure he did that with every performer that came through. Mm -hmm. But I must say, in my case, whenever he came through, he'd put his arms around me and go, you remember the night? And, remember, the, remember the night? Uh, and it ceases when you, when you said to the girl, she's a dummy. Remember that night? <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> yes, we tell me. He starts to do a stuff I did, you know, years ago, maybe in, di in different clubs. And he knew everything I did, you know. And he'd always ask about my mother, because I used to tell him stories about my mother. And, and, and the great thing that you're blessed, that you could stand out on this stage tonight and do a monologue and show people, and make people laugh and so forth and so on. And yet show the great love and respect. And, and I, you, you, you're to be commended. You oh, were just well, thank, thank you, Don. I, you know, I'm, I'm not... I'm serious when I say, you're not just Uncle Frank's favorite, but all of our favorites, and we love having you here. And I, I must tell you, uh, com uh, associated with that, yeah. when my father, rest of the story, he died. He died very young, unfortunately. He was 55 and he died, but he was a great guy, he really was. And my, I was working in Washington, D.C. In, in a strip joint, you know, and you guys play that kind of music. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in those days, they opened a feather and you saw nothing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, all, and, all the, and all the servicemen were in, were in the audience going, <laughs> <laughs> and I was in the back going, hi, 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 Anyway, <laughs> I'm a funny son of a bitch. <laughs> but, <laughs> but what I must say, that night, my cousin came to me. It reminds me with Uncle Frank God. I'm sure he'd appreciate this, knowing where he is, really. That, that they're probably having a meeting now, talking. <laughs> and and he would come back. To, he came back to stage. He said, "Don, can I see him?" And I said, "Jerry, I'm going on. I got a show to do. I'm going on. Come on, leave me alone." He said, "I got to tell you something now." I said, "What?" He said, "Dad just passed away." And I went, "Yeah." And I went out right after that and did the best show in a joint I ever did in my life. Really? It was so funny. The 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 shock of it gave me such such a lift in a weird way. 
that I was funny as hell. I really was. And it was, it was something I always remember. You know? Wow. So now when anybody dies, I go over to the house and... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> well, I'm all right. I'm sorry. Charlie died. I'll be over the house in a moment. Well, thank you for coming to our house and, oh, uh, and entertaining us. It's great, great to have you here. Don Rickles, by the way, if you've not seen Don live, you absolutely must. And uh, the people in Vancouver are very lucky because September 16th, Don will be at the River Rock Casino and September 17th at the Red Robinson Theater. I, Uncle Frank would have wanted you to have plugs. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he could. Don Rickles, everybody. We'll be right back. Music at Don Rickles is here with us. You know, your grandchildren are very lucky because, well, because you're around for them, but... Um, and they will come into a lot of money. And they will come into a lot of money. And they have Mr. Potato Head to always oh, watch, Mr. That's a, the that, voice. Pop-Pop is Mr. Potato Head. That's what they remember, the Disney, the Disney so, thing. Uh, uh, along that line, I actually, I bought, um, my Uncle Frank was lucky that his first granddaughter, his first grandchild mm. was born in January. Mm, yeah. And her name is Frankie, after him. Yeah. And um, they have these books that you can record your voice so that um, you can hear people reading your story. So, you know, if your grandparents, whatever, you can hear your grandparents reading you a story. And I thought it would be nice to team my Uncle Frank and Aunt Chippy up to have them read a story to their baby granddaughter that she could listen to. Oh. And, um, and, well, here's, here's how that went. Oh. Great to see you. Lunch. <laughs> I must say, before we go any further, I didn't want to come out. I wanted to go to the cemetery and say hello to my father. <laughs> well, my I father's laying there now going, why didn't he come over and see me, for crying out loud? <laughs> we'll do your my, dad tomorrow my night. my father died, you could cheer up. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's the matter with you? There's a girl getting a spastic attack. <laughs> Well, it's great to have you here, Again, and uh, we really appreciate you coming on, on, on late notice to honor it's Uncle the, Frank. Hey, well, well, the man was great. He really was. In fact, every time I did the show, every time, he always, he always, always touched me after a salami sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> but every time you say, because we go back to Vegas, yeah. go way back in New York when he was a cop, and I was working on a Copacabana, and he was out, he always came into the kitchen, because I used to come out from the audience, and he'd come in the kitchen and say, hey, Don, is this, and you, you, know, you know how your uncle is. The, the guy laughed at the, he laughed at anything, you know, if you were done. <laughs> I'd say, you know, Uncle Frank, uh, my cousin, that's shaking with him. <laughs> <laughs> that but is he, true, yeah. yeah. He laughed yeah. at everything, you know. That's we have way. a clip of the fir first time you were on the show, I think in 2006. Really? And um, your first Uncle Frank rests his soul, he's watching, but you were magnificent. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I just feel after that whole ceremony for Uncle Frank, it, it makes me feel good that I could come out and be Red Skelton. <laughs> uh, you know, it's not easy, you know, after you do a whole thing, you know. I know, I know. I want sorry. the December 7th in Tucson, Arizona. Please say hello to Mr. Warmth, Don Rickles. <laughs> What does that mean, Don? That means get off my mind. <laughs> Why are those blacks all the way in the back? <laughs> hey, if Obama wins, this is your state. <laughs> is that what's going to happen? 
<laughs> I don't know, and I don't care. You know, the band I'm played for a Jewish the song the band played on the way in. That's your theme song. That's a song. When did that become your theme song? The other night when I made a move on the wife. <laughs> She was laying on the bed, and I was in the hall. And went, <laughs> anyway, uh, and I missed and hit the doorknob. Anyway, uh, do you know the title of that song? Why is this a test? I, 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 I know what it is. It's w what's the name? La Virgin de la Macarena. <laughs> that, that, that includes me. Anyway, <laughs> la Virgin Macarena. No, I got that. Believe it or not, from from my attitude of always being aggressive, you know, and making fun of people and. And in good spirit, and so I always said to me, I loved, I loved bullfights. My wife and I used to go down to Tijuana and watch the guy, you know, knowing no toro, jefe, jefe, toro. That's all I know, jefe, toro, toro. <laughs> and, and I used to sit, we used to sit the ringside with the blood on the shirt. Really? No, I'm making it up. <laughs> <laughs> I hate a dumbbell host. I hate that. I'm sorry. What's the matter with you? I'm the saying regular something guy makes isn't sense. here tonight. Isn't Jesus. <laughs> You're going to Brooklyn. <laughs> I just, I can't imagine Barbara with blood on her at a sporting event and enjoying this kind of a thing. Your wife, Barbara. I know who my wife is. For <laughs> <laughs> <Hey>, them, I... <laughs> we are going no, to my, Brooklyn. My wife goes, she, she, she talks like this. She says, this is exciting. <laughs> it's a matter to go, matter to go. Exciting. <laughs> hey, see, you don't laugh. That's what I got to go through. <laughs> No, we, she's a great woman. I'm married. Uh, are you married here? No. Sorry. Anyway, uh, you're, you're a stunning woman. Somebody ought to make a move. Uh, Mexican! Anyway, uh, no, I'm married 40. I'm married 47 years. Very good. You can see the, You can see her later. She's on the corner going, Sailor! Anyway, uh, <laughs> That was my best job. Anyway, uh, Don, you have an iPhone app. This is an app yeah, that... I don't know that stuff. You, you don't know what it is. Well, I'll tell you what it yeah. is. It's an app. You yeah. know what an app is? Yeah. In general? Not really. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> no, I always get hung up with that, with the, with the apps. My wife says, you must have an app. You must have... I got that, and I got the tweets, and I got the You apps. are tweeting. Yes. Yes. The app is, uh, it's like a, a program that's on your Oh, on yeah, your you hit my head. It's the thing. Yeah, you press your head. Yeah, you, you ruined it the last time I was on. I you, did, I ruined it. You buried the whole damn thing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I ruined it. No, it's a thing. You, you hit the top of my head, and for two ninety nine, I say a couple of smart, clever remarks. No, it's, I'm sure. You'll enjoy it, and I can tell by your response, nobody's going to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> you can be insulted for less than $3, yeah, is what right. you're saying. Absolutely, absolutely. We found this uh, photograph. Excuse me. Yes. Would, would you fix your dress? Anyway, uh, <laughs> no, no, you're ruining it for everyone. No, no, you know, I'm, I'm 86 years old, married a lot of years, but when I see stunning legs like that, and it's a little high, this leg starts to go crazy. <laughs> Tell us about this photograph here. Uh, I don't know if you can see that there. That's, uh, oh, yeah. that's you. How old are you in this picture? I Yes, in my late 20s. Uh-huh. And, um... That's in Florida. That's at, the, I think, at the Rowell Hotel. And that's Abe Schiller. He, he was one of the hosts. And those two guys, uh, two Italian... Two Irish guys. No, two, two English guys that got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> the Beatles came to see you perform. That's right. They never did. And I understand that they were in town not too long ago, and Paul said... <coughs> Paul's the one that's still with us, thank God, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, and Paul one said, of the two. You, you know, I went to see him. I, Hey, he really does insult you. He insults you. No. <laughs> and did you I, used, I used to make fun of him because they talk like that, but they're billionaires, so I start kissing their... You know what I mean? <laughs> and did you, you spent some time with them afterwards. And do, you, do you remember that? Were they a big deal at that time? Well, they were, but, but Paul liked to put the blanket over me. I don't <laughs> no, they... Uh, 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 <laughs> hey, if there's another outburst, I'll clear the room. <laughs> The black folks can stay. <laughs> That's nice. That's very find generous. Out, of find you. out how the debate's going, then I'll let you know if they can stay. <laughs> you, um... No, you, uh, no it's, it's, it's the truth. What was I saying? You were talking about the Beatles. Oh, yeah. And about, uh, they were great. Uh, you know, for them to come to see me, there was, it was at the very, very height when they just arrived in America. And people were, were going bananas over them. And, and they found out about you, and they wanted to come see you, but did they not know that you were going to make fun of them while they were in the audience? They didn't live under a rock. <laughs> of course they knew. They, they knew. But they were ready to have some fun, you know. And you know the British with their sense of humor, you know. Mary, want to take a pop at it? <laughs> you know. 
Uh, they don't seem you know, to Jews have... go, okay, Shirley, here I come, baby. Here I come. And the Italian guys, hey, have us some of this. You had a uh, great honor. Hey, I... I'll try that again. Hey, have us some of this. <laughs> On uh, Comedy Central. Go, go. Got a bunch of seals out there. <laughs> Gave you an award. You got the Johnny Carson that, that Comedy was, that Award. That was a big treat for me. That really. was, and it was presented to you by um, John Stewart, John Stewart, and great. Robert De Niro presented yeah, Robert this De Niro, award yeah. to you. Well, John Stewart was great. Bob, uh, I did a picture with him called Casino. But Bob, yeah. you know, he doesn't usually do that. But he was so sweet. He never does that kind of stuff. No, right? but he yeah. but he did it with us. But the trouble is, nobody could hear him. You know. <laughs> Because, you know, when you're with Bob alone, even sitting in a restaurant, you say, Bob, pass the butter. <laughs> and you got to make out like you know what the hell he was talking about. You know? Do you have a real friendship with him? Is he somebody that you have, like, a real relationship with? No. You don't? <laughs> what do I know? No, no, no. Bob, Bob's a very quiet kind of guy and alone. He has his own group of friends, and I have mine. He's not, you know, big crowds don't, you know, knock him out. You know, I like to, you know, it's like, it's like Regis Philbin, who couldn't be here tonight because there was... Too much excitement. Anyway, uh, <laughs> he's in New York getting out of a cab. Regis is here! <laughs> Regis! Hey, Regis is here! And Donald Trump's up on the roof going, where's my comb? <laughs> do you... Do you, he, you know, he drives, uh, you know, Regis drives the car for, for Trump. D Regis is a Donald Trump's driver now? <laughs> Man makes a million billion dollars and I'm talking about... Do you know Go Don to a doctor, for Christ's sake. <laughs> well, do you know Donald Trump? Is he somebody... What is that, excitement? <laughs> I don't know. Is he somebody yes, we you know? Went, we went, this is true to me. We went, uh, oh, many years ago. My wife and I, when the Trump Plaza just went up, and we said, we're going to see the apartments. This is your wife, Barbara? I'm talking to them. <laughs> no, it's a hooker from Detroit. <laughs> What the hell's the matter with you? No, I'm sorry. Tonight, you're a nervous wreck. You're going to Brooklyn like it's exciting, for Christ's sake. Build a bridge on your ass and go home early. I'm sorry to interrupt. So, Donald, <laughs> Donald Trump... Right. So he said, he heard we were in the building. Mm -hmm. And the real estate... It's true. The real estate guy... Can you guys see okay? <laughs> Dick, your singer is like this. Going from, you, want, you want paper? <laughs> anyway, uh... <laughs> This is his how, how, about, how about a magazine? <laughs> That's what my father used to do. Go in the bathroom for seven days with a magazine. You know. <laughs> Dad, we only had one toilet. Dad, oh. <laughs> anyway, so I don't know how I got into that. But, I don't know either. <laughs> but they laugh. That's what counts. That's all that matters. New says, "Why do you say that?" I said, "They're laughing, aren't they?" <laughs> you know, that kills me. Anyway, what, what was I telling Donald you? Donald Trump. Oh yeah, so Trump. We go to the building. And we're in there looking at places. The guy says, Mr. Regulus, this penthouse is, is this, this is uh, $700,000, and this is about $200,000. And all of a sudden, Trump hears we're there. <laughs> Running down the hall, and he comes in. Don, how are you? You know. And, and if you know Donald, you know, Don, how are you? is a, a big moment. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> you start, you're saying you're looking at apartments here. Yeah. So he takes us, truth, takes us around. And he said, now, this apartment, six billion eight for the kitchen. Nine billion nine, and you have a terrace, and a hundred billion seventy thousand for this, and for the dog's place, it's another hundred thousand. It comes to about six billion eight. You'll have, you'll love it. <laughs> this is what he's talking to me, you know. He was actually your real estate agent on the yeah, scene, yeah. and I met his family. His father was a judge. I don't know. If, hope, hopefully, he's still with us. His father and his, and his kids. You know, the son. The, his, you ever see his children? Yeah, yeah. They're great. They keep taking his medicine away. <laughs> anyway. Uh, is that what's going on? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Donald gets up in the morning, he goes, oh, oh, the sweater, I need it! <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't blame them. I mean, really. That was when... a good line. I don't blame them. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. When you jump in, it's dynamite. <laughs> I'm dynamite. happy to help. Dynamite. Well, you can see Don with his friend Donald Trump. Will Donald Trump be at this particular show? No, there's a cover. Okay. <laughs> Don Rickles performing October 20th, that's this weekend, at the Hodge Mahal in Atlantic City and December 7th at Casino del Sol in Tucson, Arizona. Don Rickles, everybody. We'll be right back with Bristol Palin and Mark Bellis. What does that mean, Don? That means get off my mind. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> December 7th in Tucson, Arizona. Please say hello to Mr. Warmth, Don Rickles. <laughs> <laughs>